you who believe Give charity For the pleasure of Allah The pleasure of Allah Oh you who believe Read the Quran Every night of Ramadan Night of Ramadan Welcome O Ramadan It is Ramadan It is Ramadan Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic Zakat al Fitra, part one. Dr. Zakia, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakir, what is the meaning of Zakat al-Fitra and what are its rulings in Islamic Sharia? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajma'in, amma abad. A'udhu billahi minish shaytani rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, rabbi shahli sadri wa yassilli amri, wa ahlul ugdata min laysani yafqaf qawli. As far as the meaning of the word Zakat al-Fitra is concerned, Zakat, as we discussed earlier, means to purify. It means to clean. And fitra means the breaking of the fast. So zakat al-fitra means purifying charity for the breaking of the fast. And it is an amount of food given to the very poor Muslims or the needy Muslims. It is a fixed amount of food given to the very poor or the needy Muslims. And as far as its ruling is concerned, it is obligatory on the Muslims. It is fard. And it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1503, the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that he has enjoined on every Muslim to give one sa of dates or bali as Zakat al-Fitr on every Muslim, slave or free, male or female, young or old. So it's fard for every Muslim, male or female, young or old, slave or free. And it's also mentioned in the hadith of Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1618. The beloved Prophet Muhammad made Zakat obligatory for every Muslim. There are very few number of scholars, very small number, hardly any, who say that it was fard before, but it's no longer fard today, based on the hadith of Sunan Nisai, Book of Zakat, Hadith number 2509, where Kais ibn Saad ibn Ubada, he says that Prophet Muhammad made Zakat al-Fitra obligatory before Zakat was made obligatory. And after Zakat was made obligatory, he did not command us nor forbid us to give Zakat al-Fitra. But we had practiced it. So based on this Hadith, a very small number of scholars say, that after zakat became obligatory on the Muslim, zakat al-fitra is optional, it's not fard. But this hadith, nowhere does it say that's not fard. It's only the saying of one of the sahaba that zakat al-fitra was made fard before zakat. He doesn't say that after that it was prohibited. The Prophet didn't repeat the commandment and whenever any act of worship has been made fard and another act of worship comes which may be more in quantity, that does not mean the previous act of worship has to be stopped unless there is evidence. So based on this, most of the scholars agree that Zakat al-Fitr is fard for everyone, and the reason for both is different, inshallah, we shall discuss later. So the right ruling is that it is fard on every Muslim. Jazakallah khair, doctor. And now I would like to ask you, what exactly is the uh, wisdom behind uh, Zakat al-Fitr? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1605, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that it is obligatory on every Muslim, it is further on every Muslim to give Zakat al-Fitr, that is, sadqa, charity, for the beginning of the fast, 
for the purification of the breaking of the fast from empty and obscene talks and for feeding the poor. And Zakat al-Fitr should be given before the Salah of Eid al-Fitr. If it is given before Eid al-Fitr Salah, it is Zakat al-Fitr. If it is given after the Salah of Eid al-Fitr, then it is normal Sadqa. Based on Hadith, we come to know the main reason, the main wisdom for the giving of Zakat al-Fitr is so that the very poor Muslims, they have food to eat on the main day of the year that is the festival. The Eid al-Fitr is the main festival for the Muslims throughout the year. And because of that, every Muslim at least should have sufficient food to eat. But mainly for the very poor people, the wisdom is that they enjoy that day and they don't have to bother about eating, etc. It should be given by the rich people. Number two, it is given for the purification of our fast. The mistake that we do, the empty talks, the obscene talks, the false talks, it purifies and cleanses the mistakes that are done in the fast. Thirdly, it is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us the ability and made us fast the complete month of Ramadan. And lastly, it acts as a purification for the minor sins that we might have committed while fasting in the month of Ramadan because minor sins, they decrease our reward. So when we give zakat al-fitr, it cleanses the minor sins so that it prevents taking away the reward that we have earned in the month of Ramadan. Obviously, zakat al-fitr is uh, another example of how wonderfully balanced Islam is, alhamdulillah. Uh, Dr. Zaki, could you also tell me, is zakat al-fitr an obligation upon only those Muslims who have to pay the zakah, or is it an obligation on all the Muslims? Many of the Muslims, they think that zakat al-fitr is only an obligation on those Muslims who have to pay zakat. This is a misconception. Zakat is only fard on those Muslims who have a saving above the nisab level, as we discussed earlier. But zakat al-fitr is an obligation on every Muslim unless he is very poor and he does not have the provision. Otherwise, it's obligation on every Muslim. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1503. The beloved Prophet Muhammad said that give one sa of dates or bali as Zakat al-Fitr for every Muslim, slave or free, male or female, Young or old. That means every Muslim, whether he's free or a slave, whether he's young or he's old, whether he's male or a female, they have to give zakat. Zakat al-Fitr is an obligation on every Muslim living. But it's not required that a person you have to give zakat for a person who's in the womb of the mother, a fetus. Though there are authentic hadith saying that Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he had given zakat on a child which is not born who has a fetus, but that is optional. But zakat should be given on every Muslim who is living. And further it is mentioned by our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's mentioned in Sunan al-Bahaki, volume number four, book of Zakat al-Fitr, hadith number 7683, the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that give zakat al-Fitr on the people who are under your custody, whether young or old, whether slave or free. That means the person who is head of the family, he gives zakat to fitr for everyone who is under his custody, whether it be the children, whether it be the wives. If the elderly people, like the father who was under the custody, he's looking after the father, so he should give even zakat on the father and the mother. He should give zakat on the people under his custody, whether they are free or whether they are slave. So if you are slave, he has to give zakat to fitr even for the slave. So for all the people who are under the custody of the person, it's his duty that he should give zakat al-fitr for those people. So it's obligatory on every living Muslim, unless the person is very poor or he's very needy, like a person who doesn't have the provision, the stipulated amount for giving zakat al-fitr. If he has less than that amount, then he cannot give zakat. But naturally, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 286, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lay on anyone a burden greater than he can bear. It's further mentioned in Surah Taqabun, chapter number 64, verse number 16, 
So fear Allah as much as you can. So if a person doesn't have the stipulated amount, if he has half the amount that is required to give a zakat fitr, he can even give half the amount. But if he doesn't have, then it is not obligatory on him. Otherwise, it's obligatory on all the other living Muslims. The beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 9, hadith number 7288. The beloved Prophet said, that whenever I command you something, do it as much as you can. Do it to the best of your ability. There's a hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 2, Book of Zakat, hadith number 2147, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that there is no sadqa for a slave except for zakat al-fitr. There's no charity for a slave except for zakat al-fitr. So there are some scholars who say that even if the slave that you have is a non-Muslim, you should even give zakat al-fitr for him, which is not the right ruling, where the majority of scholars they say it is wrong, because you should take it in context, because the hadith clearly mentions, how beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, Volume number two, Book of Zakat, Hadith number 1605. Abdullah Prophet Muhammad said that give Zakat al-Fitr for the purification of your fast from empty talks and obscene talks and give it to the poor Muslims. So based on this, we come to know that a person should fast. So he should be a Muslim. So non-Muslim save if you have who does not fast. So where is the question of giving Zakat al-Fitr for him? So but naturally, it includes that it means only for the slaves or Muslims. This is the right ruling, that you have to give zakat and fitr for the slaves, which are Muslim that you have. Zakhalak for the answer, Dr. Zakir. The next question I'd like to pose to you now is, uh, what exactly should be given by way of zakat al fitra? And as a second part of the question, is money allowed to be given? As far as giving of zakat al fitr is concerned, it should be given in the form of food. It can be dates, can be barley, can be wheat, can be rice, it can be raisin, it can be oats, it can be any staple food. Whatever the staple food of that country, of that city, if it's wheat, give wheat, if it's rice, give rice, if it's date, give date. And it is unanimously agreed that it should be in the form of food and it can be preferable in the form of any grain like wheat, rice, etc. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the Book of Zakat, Hadith number 1503. Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that Allah's Messenger has enjoined to give one sa of dates or one sa of barley as Zakat al-Fitr for every Muslim, slave or free, male or female, young or old, and it should be given before the Eid al-Fitr Salah. There's another hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the Book of Zakat, hadith number 1510, narrated Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, that at the time of Muhammad Sallam, we used to give one sa of food as Zakat al-Fitr. And our food used to be barley, it used to be raisins, cottage cheese, and dates. So all these things are mentioned in the hadith. It's mentioned in a Sahih hadith of Ibn Khuzayma, hadith number 2417. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, the sadqa of Ramadan, that is zakat al-fitr, is one sa. If someone gives wheat, then it should be accepted. If someone gives date, it should be accepted. If someone gives raisin, it should be accepted. So these are the various types mentioned in the hadith. But in short, it's understood that it should be food, preferably in the form of grain. And as far as the question is concerned, that can we give something else like money, etc., it's a unanimous agreement that it should be food. You can't give anything else. You can't give money. You cannot give any clothes to the poor man or some furniture. If you want to give it as normal charity, you can't give anything. But as far as the al fitr is concerned, it should be given in the form of food. And it's clearly mentioned in the hadith. In the hadith is quoted that it should be given before the Eid prayer. The reason is that the poor man at least has something to eat on that day. So if you give him money, he may keep for some other time, etc. So it should be in the form of food, so at least his stomach is full and he doesn't have to bother about eating for that day of festival. So it's unanimous agreement that it should be given 
in the form of food. You can give the equivalent amount of money to a responsible person or any charitable organization who says that, okay, with this money, we'll buy the amount of food and give it to the very poor man or the needy man. But finally, when it reaches the recipient, it should be in the form of food. I know that there are some people who say that you can give in the form of money to the poor man, but there's no hadith at all whatsoever. So giving your own opinion based on no hadith and no backing of Quran Sunnah, it's not allowed. And as it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, hadith number 2697, Hadith Aisha, Allah be pleased with her. She said that anyone who innovates something in the deen, in the religion, it has to be rejected. And it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number three, hadith number 4267, that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that anyone who brings something new in the religion of Islam, it has to be rejected. So getting anything new innovation, it is not allowed at all. So zakat al fitr should be given in the form of food, as mentioned in the hadith. It cannot be given in the form of money or anything else. As normal charity, it can be given, but zakat al fitr should be in the form of food. Some people argue, saying that at the time of the Prophet, there was no currency, there was no paper money, you know. That's why zakat wasn't given in the form of money, but today we can give. They fail to realize that at the time of the Prophet, and at the time of Sahabas, there were dirhams, there were dinar, there were, it was not in the form of paper currency, but there was money where people used to use in the form of dirham and dinar. So to use this argument is totally wrong. So the right thing is that it should only be given in the form of food and nothing else. Right, Dr. Zaki, and the next question regarding uh, Zakat al-Fitra today is, what is the specified amount that should be given according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? As far as the quantity and the requirement of zakat al-fitr is, it is one sa of food, generally, as the hadith of Ibn Khuzayma says, hadith number 2417, that Ibn Abbas, may with him, he said that the sadqa for Ramzan, that zakat al-fitr, is one sa. And it's repeated in Sayyid al-Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of zakat, hadith number 1510, that the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at his time, Zakat al-Fitra was one sa of food. It's again mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, or number two, in the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1503, Ibn Umar, may Allah be with him, he says that Allah's Messenger enjoined one sa of date or one sa of barley as Zakat al-Fitra. So all these hadiths say you have to give one sa of food, whether it be date, barley, raisin, oat, etc. It's mentioned in the hadith of Sunnah Abu Dawud, wife number two, hadith number 3334, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that the weight should be as per the weight of Makkah and the measure should be as per the measure of Medina. Because one sa in different locality it differed. So the Prophet made it very specific that the weight should be as per the weight of Makkah and the measure should be as per the measure of Medina. So as far as one sa what was in Medina, we should follow. One sa at the time of Medina during the day of the Prophet was equivalent to four handfuls. When both the hands are put together, the so four times that handful is equal to one sa. So that is the right measure. And in terms of weight, the scholars have said it is approximately three kilos, approximately. So the satka is three kilos of rice or barley or oat or raisin or dates. Okay, Jazakallah once again for the answer, Dr. Zaki. So Dr. Zaki, the next question is, what is the correct time to give your Zakat al-Fitra? Zakat al-Fitr is mandatory for anyone who lives after the sunset, after the month of Ramadan ends. That means if a person dies few seconds after the sunset, after the month of Ramadan ends, that means the first day of Shawwal, that eve of Eid al-Fitr, it becomes mandatory that his heir should give Zakat al-Fitr. But if a person dies, few seconds before sunset of the last day of Ramadan, before the Eid of Eid al-Fitr, then zakat is not mandatory on the head. Similarly, if a person is born, a newborn child is born before sunset on the last day of Ramadan, before the Eve of Eid al-Fitr, then it's mandatory that zakat should be given on that newborn also. But if he's born a few seconds after sunset, he has not lived for even a second of the month of Ramadan, he's born after the sunset of the month of Ramadan, then zakat al-fitr is not further than him. The best time to give zakat al-fitr is in the morning before the Eid Salah 
on the day of Eid al-Fitr. But it can be given even on the eve of Eid. It can be given a couple of days in the last days of Ramadan, based on the Hadith. But the Prophet was very clear. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1605. The Prophet said that if Zakat al-Fitr is given before the Eid Salah of Eid al-Fitr, it's counted as Zakat. If it is given after the Salah of Eid al-Fitr, it is counted as Satka, normal charity. So it's very clear that Zakat al-Fitr should be given before the Eid al-Fitr Salah. It's further mentioned in the Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1503. The beloved Prophet Muhammad said that give one sa of date or one sa of Bali as Zakat al-Fitr for every Muslim, free or slave, young or old, male or female, and it should be given before the people go for the Eid Salah. That means it should reach the people who are required, it should reach the recipient should reach it before they go out for the Eid Salah. The same message repeated in Sayyid Muslim, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 2159, the beloved Prophet said that give Zakat al-Fitr to the people before they go for the Eid Salah. So the right ruling is that it should be given before the Eid Salah, on the Eid al-Fitr day in the morning, or it can even be given on the Eid Eve. But the other hadith we say that it can be given in the last couple of days of Ramadan. It's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1511. It says that people gave Zakat al-Fitr one or two days before Eid. And it also mentions the Sayyid hadith of Ibn Khuzayma, that one person asked, when did Ibn Umar give Zakat al-Fitr? So the person replied, after the tax collector had collected. So when did the tax collector collect? So he replied that one or two days before Eid. So based on this, the right ruling is it should be given before the Eid al-Fitr Salah, either in the morning before they go for Salah, that's the best, or on the eve of Eid al-Fitr, or one, two or three days before Eid. That's the ruling. Whom should it be given to? This is the next logical question. Many people have a misconception that Zakat al-Fitr can be given to the same people as Zakat can be given. As far as the category of those people who can receive Zakat, we discussed earlier a few days back. There are eight categories mentioned who can receive Zakat in Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 60. But many people have a misconception that same people can be given Zakat al-Fitr, which is totally wrong. Zakat al-Fitr can only be given to a person who's very poor or who's miskeen and who doesn't have the provision, who doesn't have food, etc. So it's not the same category. In fact, it is much more limited as compared to the category of Zakat. As is clearly mentioned in the Hadith of Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1605, the beloved Prophet Muhammad he said that give Zakat al-Fitr for the purification of the fast from empty talks and obscene talks to feed the poor people. And it should be given before the Eid Salah. If it is given before the Eid al-Fitr Salah, it's called as Zakat. If it is given after the Eid al-Fitr Salah, it's called as Satka. So based on this Hadith, we come to know that it should be given only to the very poor people, miskin people, who don't have enough food to eat. You know, so at least the day of Eid will be rest assured, it will go happy. And that's the reason he said it should be before the Eid al-Fitr Salah. As far as the normal zakat that can be given any time of the year. But there are occasions where you can give it to a trustworthy person who can give that food on behalf to somebody else. It's difficult for you to find such a person who's very poor and very needy, who doesn't have food. So you can give it to a trustworthy person or you can give it to another organization or a person who collects. In this case, it can be given earlier, but it should be noted and seen to it that the person who gets this food to be given to the poor people or gets the money from which food is purchased and given to the people, the recipient should receive it only in the kind of food and should receive before the Eid Salah, preferably in the morning before they go for Eid Salah or on the eve of Eid or a couple of days before Eid. Based on the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of representations, Hadith number 2311, 
Abu Huraira, may Allah be with him, he says that the Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had appointed me to collect the zakat of fitr, sadqa of Ramadan. So he was appointed for that. So that means you can give it to someone on behalf so that he can deliver it to the people who are really quiet. And it's also mentioned in the Sahih Hadith of Ibn Khazaymah that a person asked that, when did Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, used to give the zakat of fitr, sadqa of Ramadan. So the reply was, after the collectors had finished collecting the amount. So when did the collector finish? The reply was one or two days before Eid. That means it can be given to a collector or someone who has been deputed to collect. And then that person should see to it, he reaches the recipient at the right time before the Eid al-Fitr Salah and should receive in the form of food and nothing else. Dr. Zaki, last question today in the interview phase. Um, could you explain the difference between zakat and zakat al-fitra? As far as the difference between zakat and zakat al-fitr is concerned, number one, as we discussed earlier a few days back, that zakat means to purify, to cleanse, to increase. And zakat al-fitr means a purifying charity for the breaking of fast specifically. So the first is purification of your wealth and surplus amount, etc. That is zakat. Zakat al-fitr is purification of the breaking of the fast, means purification of the fast you have kept from the minor sins you have committed or the obscene talks or the empty talks. That's number one. Number two, that zakat is mainly given on the wealth. It's meant for purifying your wealth, your surplus wealth, if it is above the nisab level. As far as zakat al-fitr is concerned, it is meant for purification of your fast from empty talks, from obscene talks, all the minor sins that you might have done in the month of Ramadan while fasting, so it purifies that. Number three, zakat should be given by every Muslim who has a surplus wealth above the nisab level. And the nisab level for normal things with the gold, silver wealth, etc. is equivalent to 85 grams of gold and 595 grams of silver. If it's cattle, then we discussed earlier that sheep, more than 40, you have to give one sheep, etc., etc. For the farm produce, if without irrigation, it is 10%, with irrigation, 5%, etc. So basically, it should begin with those people who are saib and nisab, who have extra wealth, surplus wealth. As far as zakat al-fitr is concerned, every Muslim, whether slave or free, young or old, man or woman, should give zakat al-fitr unless he is very poor or miskeen or doesn't have the provision. This is the third difference. Fourth difference is that the recipient of zakat, there are eight categories. As mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 60, fuqara, the poor people, masakin, the needy, amilun, those involved in collecting of zakat, mullah futur qulub, those whose hearts are coming towards Islam. Number five, Rikab, freeing of slaves. Number six is Gharimun, the debtors. Number seven is Fi Sabilillah in the way of Allah. And the eighth is Ibn Sabil, the wayfarer. These are the eight categories who can receive zakat. As far as the recipient of zakat al-fitr is concerned, mention hadith of Sunan Abu Daud, volume number two, book of zakat, hadith number 1605. It should be given to the poor people. So the recipient are only the very poor and the miskin people who don't have the provision of food. That is the fourth difference. The fifth difference is that the time may should be given. Zakat can be given any time of the year. Though it has to be given when you have surplus wealth for one full year, that is the time it is due. But it can be given any time of the year. People prefer the month of Ramadan being a blessed month, but can be given any time of the year. As far as zakat al-fitr, it is limited time. You should give it before the Eid al-Fitr Salah, preferably before the poor people go to pray Salah. Or maximum permission is Eve of Eid al-Fitr or one, two or three days before Eid. That's it. So limited three, four days time where Zakat al-Fitr can be given, whereas Zakat it can be given throughout the year. And the last difference is, as far as Zakat al-Fitr is concerned, it should be given in the form of food that we mentioned, rice, wheat, barley, raisin, dates, etc. 
But zakat can be given any form, in the form of money, it can be gold, it can be silver, it can be animal. So the equivalent amount can be any form. So these are the major six differences between zakat al-fitr and zakat. Well, Dr. Zaki and Naik, thank you very much once again. Jazakallah khair for all your answers on the topic zakat al-fitr. Alhamdulillah. Um, I think we've covered most of the essential issues regarding the topic, don't you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Shall we move on to the question and answer session? Inshallah. The viewers must be dying to know some of the answers that you're going to give today, inshallah, on the topic zakat al-fitr. So without further ado, let's take the first question. Is it permissible for an imam of a mosque to collect the zakat al-fitr and distribute it to those who are entitled to it? Even if that is a while later, does it increase if there is inflation? It's a very interesting question. As far as an imam collecting zakat al fitr, as I mentioned earlier, there are various hadiths mentioning that someone can collect zakat al fitr. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of representations, hadith number 2311, that Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, he says, that the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had appointed him to keep the Zakat al-Fitr. He was appointed as one of the collectors. And there are other hadith in Sahih Hadith of Ibn Khuzayma, which says that when a person asks that when did Ibn Umar, may Allah be with him, when did he used to give his Zakat al-Fitr? So the person replies that after the collectors had finished. That means they were collected at the time of the Prophet. So someone collecting on behalf of anyone else, it's permitted. But you should see today that the person collecting is honest, you know, like Imam of a mosque, Alhamdulillah, no problem, or an organization, it can be given. Regarding the question that, can it be given later? That means the person who collects it, can he give it later? No. The right ruling is the person who collects, he can collect a few days earlier. That's no problem. But it should reach the recipient before the Eid Salah of Eid al-Fitr is over. That's very important. And it should reach in the form of food. You can give money to the collector if you don't have food, or you can give food directly. But the person collecting should see to it that if you give money, it should buy the amount of food required for the stipulated share of the al fitr And he should see to it, it reaches the recipient before the recipient goes for each salah is the best. That's the best, or on the eve, one day earlier. As far as inflation is concerned, should the zakat al fitr increase? See, since zakat al fitr is not in currency note. It's in the form of food. So if inflation is there, the cost for you to buy the food will increase. But one sa will remain one sa. So what one sa could purchase maybe 20 or 100 years back, if it may be costing maybe a couple of pounds or a few rupees, today it may have increased, but one sa of rice remains one sa of rice. One sa of barley, one sa of date. So that's the reason it is the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger they gave it in kind, not in cash. If zakat al-fitr was in cash, then the problem inflation would have come. Same thing with zakat. It's in the form of gold. If you have surplus more than 85 grams of gold, it doesn't say surplus more than 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds or $100 or $1,000 or 100 rupees or 1,000 rupees. It's in form of kind. So if inflation is there, the cost for buying that kind increases, but the amount remains the same. So inflation also would be one sa of date or raisin or rice, etc. Okay, Jazakallah khair for the answer. Next question from one of the viewers. Does the employer have to pay zakat al-fitr on behalf of his workers and servants, or should they pay it for themselves? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in the Sahih Hadith of Sunan Bahaki, volume number four, Book of Zakat, Hadith number 7683. The beloved Prophet said, and he ordered that give Zakat al-Fitr for the people who are under your custody, whether young or old, whether free or slave. So all those who are under your custody have to pay Zakat al-Fitr. So a slave is under your custody. But the people who are your workers, who you are paying wages, whether they be your servant, whether they be your employee, they aren't fully under your custody. You are paying them wages. So if you are paying their wages, if they are working in a factory, working in a shop, working in a house, then you don't have to give Zakat al-Fitr on their behalf. They are entitled to give Zakat al-Fitr for themselves or if they have a guardian, they're entitled, but the employer is not liable to give zakat al-fitr on the employee. A slave is a different thing as compared to servants and people who are working for you in the factory, etc. So you're not liable for those who are working under you, as long as they're paying them wages. Okay. 
that's very good. Self-explanatory, I think, as well. Alhamdulillah. Next question. If a person forgets to pay zakat al-fitra and remembers after Eid gets over, what should he do? As far as zakat al-fitr is concerned, as you mentioned earlier, it should be given before the Eid al-fitr salah. As the Prophet ﷺ said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari or number two, Book of Zakat, Hadith number 1503, the beloved Prophet ﷺ said that if it is given before Eid al-fitr salah, it is zakat. If it is given after Eid al-fitr salah, it is sadqa, normal charity. So it should be given before the Eid salah. If a person does not give before Eid salah, then he should ask for forgiveness. He should repent and immediately give it as soon as possible. But if someone forgets out of forgetfulness, then inshallah, inshallah, Allah will forgive. Because Allah SWT doesn't hold a person responsible if he forgets or does something out of mistake. Like a person drinks water forgetfully while he's fasting, Allah forgives him. So in this case, if he forgets, but not unintentionally, then Allah will forgive him. But he should fulfill it as soon as possible, give that similar amount to a very poor person as soon as possible. Inshallah. Zakallah khair. Um, next question. Is zakat al fitra to be paid in the place where one stays, or can it be deputed to somebody else to spend in another city? As far as zakat al fitr is concerned, it should be spent in the place where you're staying. If you're staying in a particular place, it should be given to the people of that place. Even if you travel somewhere, for example, if you travel for the last few days of Ramadan and you make Eid in another country, the Zakat al-Fitr should be given in that place where you spend the eve of the Eid. This is the right opinion. Though there are some scholars who say that if the people in your area are very well off and they don't require it, then it can be given to somebody else who gives it to another country where there are more poor people. But the right ruling is that as far as possible, it should be given in the place where you spend your eve of the Eid. So that the people around you, they can celebrate Eid and they can be happy on the day of festival. <laughs> Inshallah. Well, Dr. Zakir, last question for you today. Inshallah. Uh, question here says, I paid Zakat al-Fitra more than a week before Eid. Is that valid? Question is, if it is not valid, then what should I do? As far as giving Zakat al-Fitr early is concerned, all the scholars, all schools of thought agree that it should be given before the Eid al-Fitr Salah. But how early can it be given? Can it be given much earlier than that? One week, two weeks, one month? Here the opinions of different schools of thought differ as well as scholars. According to the Maliki and the Humbly schools of thought, they say that the earliest it can be given is one or two days before Eid. Based on the Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, Volume number two, Book of Zakat, Hadith number 1511, where Ibn Umar, may Allah be with him, he said that people used to give Zakat al-Fitr one or two days before Eid. And further, if it's a collector who's collecting it, based on the Hadith of Ibn Khuzayma, when a person asks that, when did Ibn Umar, may Allah be with him, used to give Zakat? So the reply was that after the collector used to collect. When they used to collect, the reply is one or two days before. So that means while collecting, you can collect it a bit earlier. And there's another hadith. It's mentioned in Muatta, Imam Malik, volume number one, hadith number 630. It says that Ibn Umar, may Allah be with him, he used to send the zakat al-fitr to the collectors two or three days before Eid. So here it shows that if you're giving to a collector, you can give one, two or three days, maximum three days before the Eid, according to the Humbly school of thought and Maliki school of thought based on these hadith. According to the Hanafis and the Shafis, they say that it can be given in any day during the month of Ramadan. As long as you finish the first day of Ramadan, because Zakat al-Fitr means purification of the breaking of the fast. As long as you keep one fast, after that it can be given any time. And but naturally the people who collect it can collect it and give it at the right time. So based on this, you can give any time of the month of Ramadan. There are some few scholars who say it can be given any time of the year, but the opinion is not correct, it's very weak. But the right opinion is that if given personally, it should be given before the Eid Salah, before the people go out for offering the Eid al-Fitr Salah, or can be given on the eve of Eid al-Fitr. 
if it's given to a collector, it can be given one, two, or three days before the Eid. That's the right ruling. If someone has given zakat al fitr one week before, and if he's given directly to the poor person, it's not accepted, he should give it again. But if he gave it to a collector who will collect it and give it maybe on the eve of Eid, etc., then he did not give it again. But if it's given to a poor person directly, one week before, he should give it again. This is the right ruling. Dr. Zakia, thank you very much. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for all your hard work on doing so much research and answering all the questions on the topic uh, Zakat al-Fitrah today. You've answered the questions of our viewers very nicely. And may Allah award them for watching as well. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, thank you very much for watching. And as I've already said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless Dr. Zakia, bless myself as well. SubhanAllah, for being patient and watching this program, alhamdulillah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you by you giving your zakat al-fitra this year in the holy month of Ramadan, or just as it's ending, as we've learned, this is the ruling. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for the people that you give it to, that they may feel the benefit of having food in their stomach in this wonderful time the Eid, Eid al-Fitra, alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, do join us again tomorrow at the same time when we will be discussing the topic Eid al-Fitra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صب وعتق وقنوت فيه صدق يهونا صبر ورق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأطل مسعدا أهلا وخلا لتهون